So where do we go from here? Benjamin Hall alluded to it, and now we've got Heritage Foundation senior research fellow, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense, and retired Navy Commander. Peter Brooks is here. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Good to be here. Uh, so you say that the Iranian regime is shaky. What message are they trying to send? Because uh, either those targeted points were meant to just send a message and not have a high body count, or mm -hmm. they have really bad aim. What is it? Well, look, they have a couple of audiences, Kennedy, right? Uh, they've got the United States. Uh, they've got people in Iraq. And, of course, they have their own audience in Iran, right? They said they were going to take revenge. They set a red line, and they had to do something about it. So they're signaling a lot of different people here. Uh, how successful they were in that messaging, it's not clear at this point. I mean, we're still early in this, in this breaking news. But, yes, they have, they have said what they were going to do, but we can't assume that this is the end of it. No, and uh, I, I worry that it is only the beginning. And every time there is action, there is a reaction. And then 17, 18 years later, you're still there. So uh, diplomatically, how do you cool things down or even militarily? What can well, you do? All op well, all options are on the table, and that includes from doing nothing. Uh, to taking military strikes against Iran in Iran or, or elsewhere against do? its forces. Well, look, I think I, what I want to do is I want to get a battle damage assessment, which we're doing, and we're hearing positive news in that respect that there may have been no casualties on the U.S. On the US side. We're going to assess, for, and we're also going to do our force protection too, right? We've had an attack. This has started. We need to be ready. It doesn't need, mean it's going to come in Iraq. It could come someplace else. Um, and then we're going to assess what we need to do to respond to it. Now, that's going to look at every action we take, and every action is going to have some sort of consequence, right? So is, the question is, the president is going to have to make a decision where he wants to go with this. And we thought we might hear from him tonight, but obviously he decided so far that he's not going to, uh, to say anything. But there could be airplanes in the air, too, responding to this. So they have to decide where they want to take this. They're going to be looking. The intelligence folks are going to be out there collecting everything they can on Iranian forces. That includes their paramilitary forces and paramilitary forces in Iraq and deciding what it looks like Iran plans to do next. Like I said, we could be in a defensive position right now because there could be additional attacks coming. And then the president has to decide what sort of targets, if he decides to respond militarily, he wants to go after. It doesn't what would, have to what be would be smart from from his point of view, uh, having been in this situation before, uh, not only serving in the Navy, but also in the Department of Defense? What is the smartest plan for the president? Well, look, I think you have to use all instruments of national power, and that includes the diplomatic. You can certainly make an issue of this. You need to talk. You need to consult with allies and partners. That includes not only in, in the region, but probably probably Europe. You're going to want to talk to Congress about these sort of things. You're going to want to make it clear what Iran did um, in firing these missiles uh, and the attempts to take American, American lives. There are economic consequences. I mean, this is a business network. There are still things we can go after in terms of Iran. We weaken their economy significantly. The, it contracted by 10 percent last year. There are still things we could do there. And then there are military options, what we call kinetic options. And that in, could include everything from political targets to military targets to economic targets. You could go after their oil infrastructure. You could take out one of their Navy, Navy ships. You could go after the uh, IRGC headquarters. There are a lot of things. But you, as each one of these options you look at, mm -hmm. Kennedy, you have to decide what are the consequences of the, each of those actions? Because there are likely to be I, consequences. I think, it, I think it's incredibly dangerous, uh, the list of consequences that we could enumerate, uh, particularly in an election year. We hear a lot about the Iranians attacking uh, our grid and cyber espionage and cyber warfare. What can the United States do in that realm to Iran? Because you say this is a, a weak regime. Right. What can we do uh, cyberistically to weaken them further? Well, certainly we, we could take, undertake cyber attacks, and that would be a non-kinetic sort of response that could have, you know, we could shut down their, their oil industry, for instance. We could shut down their, their power system. We could shut down their Internet. But you also have to think about, Kennedy, the effect it has on the Iranian people. Our beef is with the Iranian government, which, in my view, took the first punch at the United States. You know, we, we talked about that series, that sequence of events that you, you so well laid out, but you forgot to mention that starting in October, 
through December, there were 11 or 12 rocket attacks against U.S. forces in mm -hmm. Iraq, besides all those other things. So my view is that Iran threw the first punch. So, But we, we also don't want to alienate the Iranian people. We want to punish the regime because the Iranian people are victims of that Iranian regime and their policies. All right, uh, we've got some video right now of Qasem Soleimani's funeral, and obviously it is, as his name would kind of suggest, a solemn occasion in Iran. And the foreign minister, Javad Zarif, has promised a proportional response to his death. He is being called a martyr, and revenge will be uh, taken in his name. So when, when uh, Zarif says that there is going to be proportional response. What do you think that means? Well, that could have been the attack on the military forces because they considered Soleimani to be a general and a military man. Uh, and even though he was, he was involved with the IRGC, which we considered to be a terrorist organization, and we considered him to be a terrorist as well. So this could be the end of the response, but it may not be. That's what our intelligence services right now are trying to assess. What comes next? Remember, it's in the middle of the night over there in the, in the Middle East, and it's very, it can be very, very difficult uh, to assess these sort of things. Battle damage assessment, if there's any movement of, of Iranian forces, are they on alert, things along this line, while we assess how we're going to, how we're going to respond to this. So this could be, I mean, I don't, I don't trust the Iranians, quite frankly. Uh, they could have said this, anyway. that it would be, yeah, it, it could have been said it was a military, going to be a military response, uh, proportionate response, and then they could have done something completely different. And yeah, they maybe, still might you know what, that. maybe they don't know. Maybe they've splintered. Well, they've got to uh, be very desperate, careful. And they're all over the place, which could make them even more dangerous. We don't know. We're going to keep our eye on all of it. Peter Brooks, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.